To ease back into civilian life, these programs assist in help finding job opportunities, create resumes and training sessions in order to help them get back into the workforce. And with 80% of cardiac arrests happening at home, training like this is essential. And that need has only gone up, so officials are asking for corn, soup, and beans. And then on the day of the drive, those items are then placed in big pallet boxes and donated to food shelves. Testing your home for radon is really simple. Make sure you have a test kit and fill out all the information on there before you use it. Place a sponge inside of it and hang it up for three days. And then as soon as you're done, take the sponge out, seal it up, and make sure you send it in right away. It's already tough for veterans to find work in the U.S. I figured, ah, I'll find a job quick. It won't be that bad. It took me about six months to find a job. And Derek Utley was one of the lucky ones. For many veterans, the job search drags on even longer. With an expected influx of more than 2,700 Minnesota National Guard members, the need to find jobs will get intense. It's already a tough market for vets. With a national unemployment rate of 8.3%, the veterans unemployment rate is 11%. It's hard for many who work with vets to understand why it's so tough for them to find jobs. Today's veterans get high-level training in working with others in tense situations, often work with complicated machinery, and many receive computer and other high-tech experience. These veterans are coming back with these skills, which are, I believe, are marketable. Sometimes the difficulty in finding a job is complicated by the challenge of adjustment to life at home. That transition from military life to civilian life uh, for some people is very difficult. To help ease that transition and get veterans ready to re-enter the workforce, a new program has been implemented. Operation Red Bull is designed to help currently deployed troops prepare to enter into the civilian workforce before they even set foot on American soil. Well, we're starting to work on their resumes, giving them labor market information, job search and stuff like that while they're over on their deployment. To ease back into civilian life, these programs assist in help finding job opportunities, create resumes and training sessions in order to help them get back into the workforce. The Minnesota legislature is also trying to help. One pending bill would encourage employers to give hiring preference to vets through state stimulus grants. Another bill would increase veteran preference for state government jobs and contracts. Military leaders believe both bills would significantly help the reintegration into civilian life. There's all kinds of wonderful reasons, you know, for hiring veterans but yet we seem to uh, um, still be uh, you know fighting for those jobs out there. In Duluth, Danielle Pisek, the Northlands News Center. It's the fourth largest ski race in the world. We will have 9,700 skiers on the start line for our three races. Over 800 of those skiers have competed in the Berkey for more than 20 years. And 187 of those have skied in the last 30 or more Berkeys. And although it's quiet right now, tomorrow morning Cable and Hayward will have thousands of people lining their streets cheering these athletes on. We have skiers coming from uh, 20 countries as well as almost every state. Bringing 25,000 people into a community of only 2,000. As you can imagine, it's going to be packed but local businesses aren't complaining. That affects our economy by generating between four and five million dollars just on race week. We have a lot of room for spectators, so it's, um, it's really busy. It's beyond belief as far as numbers. Officials are expecting a record number of people flocking to this year's Berkey. Organizers are pulling out all the stops to make this a top-notch event, bringing in none other than Norwegian former cross-country skier and three-time Olympic gold medalist Vegard Ulvak, who will be competing in Saturday's race. Ulvak already tested out the trail and gave his approval. It fits perfect to this kind of race and, and I, I can't imagine that it's such a trail anywhere in the world actually. A trail special to the world into the community. In Hayward, Danielle Pisek, the Northlands News Center. He's been gone since last November. 14-year-old Caitlin Pierce and her 11-year-old sister Madison haven't seen their dad, Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Pierce, in a year. We visited the kids at school today in Iron Junction, ostensibly to talk with them about parents off at war. How much do you, do you miss your dad? Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, it'd probably be like 50. The girls said they couldn't wait for dad to come home. I love my dad and I'm proud of him and he does a lot of good stuff for us. Staff Sergeant Pierce was on his second deployment with the National Guard serving in Afghanistan. But after a long year, these girls are about to get the surprise of a lifetime. Their hero is finally home. I'm very excited and, and I can't wait to go in there and, and just see the look on their face and 
because uh, I've been hiding it now for about three days. I've been up here for three days and been hiding it, waiting for this day. So uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited. Caitlin and Madison weren't expecting their dad home for a while when he suddenly walked into their classrooms. Looking for Maddie. Pierce was finally able to hold his little girls. It feels awesome. I think it was a really good surprise. I think it was awesome. Uh, they didn't know I was coming, which made it even better. Um, a true surprise, I guess. So, but it, it's this. This is where it's at. Right here. It's good. In Iron Junction, Danielle Pisek, the Northlands News Center.